uh, Synoptics. Um, in this video, we're gonna over make a little overview how to how to use it. This is more for animators, but I think it's um, it's good for uh, also the the developers or the riggers to understand how it works. So, um, I have this uh, scene from my previous video, and basically the pickers work like the Maya selection means that if we use shift it's gonna toggle, if we use control it's gonna select shift control it's gonna add to selection if we have something like this one that selects multiple objects at the same time it's not gonna be highlighted uh, regarding the highlight um, feedback uh, I have to to advise you that if you have many synoptic opens only the last one is gonna have active the the script jobs that make this uh, happen. In the future versions, I'm gonna update it to, to have uh, multiple synoptics uh, highlighting, but uh, at this moment, this is a limitation that you need to bear with. So you can you can have one synoptic open only and toggle your characters from here, but if you want to have multiple synoptics, this is not gonna work, and I'm gonna show you, like, if I open another synoptic, it means it's the same, the same character, so. You can see the last one, it's highlighting as you expect. So if I select here or select there, but this one is not highlighting anymore. It doesn't mean it's not working. I mean, it's working perfectly, but it's just that doesn't give you the feedback anymore because it's the new one is killing the script just for the, for the previous one. So just a little advice there and let's continue. So how it works, the other functions that maybe it's a little more complex than selection. So let's say I have this uh, arm a little lower and if I click here in, with the middle mouse button it's gonna make flip pose if I click with the right it's gonna mirror the pose so you have flip and mirror pose here is the same the only thing is this is a kind of a shortcut for uh, one control at a time if I have more than one control selected like let's say I have this and this, okay. Look, this is oh, that's frozen the feedback again because I closed the other one. Just synoptic, it should be now good. Okay, so now I have the good feedback. So we have these two. So obviously, if we click one, it's only one gonna work in one with a middle click. But if I if I use this one, it's gonna work with all the selection. So just remember that. Okay, later we have these um, buttons here that does like a quick selection for many objects at the same time. It's similar to this one. This selects rows or fingers, and this will select all the fingers. And this is only keying the, the fingers on one hand or the other. If you use K all, it's gonna key all everything. So that's for the picker area. Um, let's go here on the functions area. The um, we have the IKFK matching thing. So basically, you can IKFK match, but also you can um, match and transfer animation. So let's say I have these two, um, like three, okay, like this. So I save one keyframe here. I'm going to frame twenty five. I'm just gonna add. I'm just gonna hide the guide okay so let's say it's I do uh, I do this animation okay there so now I select again my controls and save key so I have this animation fantastic and now I want to transfer to FK uh, sorry to AK so yeah here is gonna match but as soon as I move everything is again FK, so I didn't save and everything. So if we use the right click on these buttons, it's gonna pop this space transfer menu. And basically you have uh, options to transfer from IK to FK uh, animation. And you can transfer from start to finish or you can transfer, um, sorry, start to finish is this one, 200, that is 200 frames or only the time slider. And then you, you, you have to choose if you want to transfer to IK or to FK. In this case, we know it's if we are in FK, so we want to transfer to IK. And then this is only keyframe. So we have keyframe on the frame one and on the frame 25. 
So it's gonna save keyframes on these two frames. So this, if it's good for blocking when you're doing blocking, but maybe if you have some refinement on the curve, you want to uncheck this so it's gonna bake each frame. So it has to, um, it has uh, some advantages and disadvantages, but you you have to choose which one is is better in in for you. In this case, I'm gonna leave it like that. So I'm just gonna space transfer. It's gonna um, kind of lock the window here, the so it's easier, uh, so faster. It's saying okay, there's some options that are lock that's normal but you can see the animation is transfer so that's it so you can transfer animation from IK to FK using this right click button and the same for the legs so you can do the same for the legs and yeah that's very convenient function now that we know how to transfer stuff um, let's check how to um, how to edit or how to um, uh, sorry, not to edit, but how to transfer the spaces on other areas. So you have the IKFK transfer, that's clearly for IKFK, but later you have the space switches. The space switches are the, the switches that we use uh, to transfer um, where is the space on one part. So for instance, I have here my, my hand, and my hand now, if I move the, the body, you see it's, it's following the body, if I move the upper part, following the upper part but let's say I want to to follow the hip so I'm just put my my hand here and now I want to change to hip so if I select here my my editor and go here on the IK reference uh, and I change from shoulder to um, spine root that it's the hip you see it's a little pop there probably you let me do it again just a little bit but in some situations it's gonna pop quite quite a lot. So here is the switcher, but it's not matching for for you. So this is just saying um, straight to Maya, okay, change this space, but it doesn't care if it you, you have some offsets already add there. So uh, make it let's make it more exaggerated there. So now when I I change again to my shoulder, boom, it's a big big jump from one to another. So obviously we don't want that. That's pretty bad. So we have to use it from the synoptic. And the reason because um, we use it from the synoptic is um, because the synoptic also have a mechanism to, to make it match in the space. So um, we can keep the same position while matching the stuff. So in this case, if I use here switch from uh, shoulder to uh, root again, you see it this is jumping here because this is the, the constraint, but the the arm itself is not moving at all. So that's the way that we want to do it. And again, if we have animation, let's say now we are on the spine, so I have this spine, so save there, and we go to another frame, and we want to save, save there. So right now, you have this movement, and now I want to keep the movement, but I don't want to to be attached anymore to the to the hip. So to do that, um, we go here, and the last option is space transfer. And we have a menu very similar to the IKFK transfer, but well, indeed it's exactly the same. Um, here, because I don't have keyframes on my 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 hand, that's um, something to remind. So if you only uh, use uh, the keyframes here, obviously it's not going to bake anything. So we're gonna use this, and because I know it's uh, 25, I think I'm just gonna keep it this to 25. And here we're gonna change again to shoulder and space transfer. So now it's gonna bake all the keyframes up to 25 on the on the space. So it, should, it looks the same, but now this is completely independent. I mean, the, the hand is completely independent of the hip because we are on the shoulder space again. So that's the way that we use the uh, space uh, switcher, and we have it for the head and shoulders, the IK position, this one, and the up vectors. So that's uh, how it works this part. Now we have this uh, group here that we have some uh, buttons there and there. We already saw that um, this. Um, 
mirror pose, flip pose thing. We have reset bind pose, pretty clear. The difference between reset bind pose and reset select um, transform it's um, almost same position, but here, for instance, this control the reset bind pose has some information. So if we reset transform, it's going to be a slightly different. That's the only difference. Select all, pretty clear. Key selected, key all. Also, I think it's pretty self-explanatory. And then we have this A, B, C, D, F. So this is um, just a little um, quick selection set thing, kind of thing. Um, so you can select a few objects. Now with the middle click button, we store this information. So next time we want to select, we can reselect with this. And with this right click, we keyframe this selection set. So now we want there, we want there, we want there. So you can see I'm, I'm keying on the on this quick selection set, even if it's not selected. So if I go there and key, now if I select, it's there keyframe. So, um, this is based on a custom channel that stores the strings for the names and it's uh, live between sessions so means if you save your scene next time you open you're gonna have the same selection set um, but it has a, an issue well it's not an issue but it's slow so if you add too many objects too many uh, controls and you store this one next time you, I select look it's taking it quite long to, to select, oh my god, that's super slow. So it's something um, you need to m keep in mind. Obviously there's a lot of space to improvement this one. This is something I, I should uh, do in in the future, but for the moment you just can use it as your convenience. If it's a little, I mean, a amount of objects is very useful. If you have a lot of uh, objects, I will not recommend it to use and maybe you better custom one of these uh, little buttons with uh, multiple selections that is way faster than using this one. So I think that's all for the synoptic view. I hope it's uh, informative for you and please let me know in the comments if you have any, any questions using it. Thank you for listening. Bye bye.